Hello everybody, it's Andy Mack here. I'm just bringing you a uh, colour supplement to my presentation that I did yesterday um, on reflection. Um, I should have really got the um, the green table out and uh, presented them on, on this. Um, obviously when I was putting the figures out on the table, it, it, it didn't cross my mind that they would uh, the white table would soak up so much of the colour. So... Um, I think I have had that mis made that mistake previously, so uh, um, just another lesson learned. But um, but yeah, it wasn't really sufficient to present that they um, were in fact painted figures that I was presenting. It was just a black, uh, dark shadows that you could see, and it was uh, pretty poor um, in terms of the visual aspect of the presentation. Um, what I said was pretty pretty to, to on the mark in terms of the uh, it, it being a representation of the second. Reserve Prussian Corps that fought at um, Dresden in 1813. Um, it's 15 millimeter, obviously. Um, obviously, I'm a war gamer. My figures are painted to a war gaming standard, and, and that standard I'm happy with. Um, I paint them to get the armies done, um, and not to with a view to entering them into painting competitions like that. And I obviously do admire, and, and I do enjoy watching people's painted figures. I wanted to spend time. With all the details of the uniform, the 28 mils and the, the sort of 20 mils and so forth. But for my part, um, a few years ago, I did a little maths and uh, I worked out that I wanted to work at a faster rate and get the armies done. Um, I painted to a war game standard as opposed to anything higher. Um, and, and I'm happy with that decision that I've made. Um, also, um, the, the figures I get, I generally like to get to the lower end of the market because of the scale I use. It does mean I have to use a lot of... Um, artillery and things like that which all bumps up the cost to the armies um so yeah I, I do try and keep the costs right down in terms of which manufacturers i use so cost effective manufacturers is what i want and it's the mass effect which, which i look for um so yeah this is the color supplement i've got a few extras a bit of terrain that i didn't mention yesterday which i bought recently and i'll feature um so as just a a very brief recap i won't go into detail use yesterday but it's um uh, four Russian brigades um, with attached artillery and some uh, horse and uh, light infantry. Um, they are three battalions of West Prussian uh, Infantry Regiment, which is the regulars, uh, which the rest of the armies were, um, or the rest of the uh, both reserve infantry um, kind of militia type effect, and the Landwehr um, were all um, supporting. Um, so it is the Musketeer Regiments, uh, so West Prussian uh, Infantry Regiment number 1, West Prussian Infantry number 2, uh, Silesian um, Infantry Regiment number 1, and Silesian Infantry Regiment number 2 at the back there. So and they were the core to the, um, to the, to the uh, core to the core. <laughs> um, and, and then the Reserve Infantry Regiments uh, were slightly more, uh, it, it's whether, you know, it's obviously Landwehr um, were a kind of militia, and as were reserves were sort of called up um, in a similar way. And they obviously they had um, some uniform difficulties, so some of their uniforms were irregular. Um, interestingly, a lot of the 1813 uh, land, um, reserve wore a, a, a cap as opposed to a shako. Some of them were equipped with shakos, but some of them would have caps. But I haven't really got the caps represented, just standard shakos, and they are the same figures that I use for the um, actually infantry, regular infantry uh, regiments, um, but just obviously painted a little bit more irregularly in terms of uniform colour and generally grey. Um, the officers, incidentally, I led to understand and have been painted as uh, wearing the sort of uh, Prussian blue um, smock coats and uh, uniform. Right, so yeah, so that's it. So it's 41 battalions in all, um, including one Schutzen um, infantry battalion, which was split between two different brigades, uh, half and half. Um, now I'm not going to go into detail which which heart, which um, cavalry supported what, but they're also the new March dragoons. I didn't feature yesterday. I'll just zoom in on them now quickly. They are the the blue four squadrons of uh, blue squadron. Incidentally, on my scale is three, uh, cav approximately three figure two to three cavalry figures, uh, but I do it as three. Um, so that's the um, the March dragoons. Um, also uh, Lancers um, supporting and I mentioned yesterday the first Silesian uh, Hussars um, 
So they are, there he's going, so I've got straight in one of their swords. <laughs> um, yeah, so in each each infantry brigade has, is supported by a artillery, uh, oops, artillery um, battery. So you've got four artillery batteries. Then you've also got two horse artillery batteries. Um, and um, then you've got uh, further five um, batteries of six pounders. And sorry, you've then got further two batteries of 12 pounders, further five batteries of six pounders and one battery of howitzers. Um, so that's generally, the reserve is generally over here. Reserve artillery, which I've um, in the process of painting, haven't finished yet. It doesn't take me long to paint um, the artillery and artillery staff. So you're all going to be seasick, aren't you? Zoom out a bit. Generals at the back there, unpainted. Over here, I mentioned the lances, Landwehr. Cavalry. Um, I didn't mention yesterday the, the I've got four squadrons of the National Cavalry Regiments, um, which I understand from one source I've read, I've only read one source of the that they were dressed very similarly to um they were rich sort of I'm assuming aristocrats or rich people who um, formed their own regiments and they were dressed in this, in the manner of hussars. So um I'll be getting four squadrons of those as well to add to it. Um at the back there we've got um the Limber Team's uh, Riders, uh, they are alternative armies, is it? I bought them. Um, they're sort of, I'm El Cheapo in terms of like to source um, cheap Limber, in particular Limbers, because um, Limbers, are, I'm horrified, as I mentioned yesterday, how, how expensive it is to quit out at this scale or a, an army with all relative Limbers. So um, cause I need a lot with the amount of guns I have and my um, the rules I use. So they're just in basic block painted at the moment, but I will be touching them up and getting them all right, um, doing their strappings and stuff. The strappings are black, so it makes it quite easy. Um, and the limbers are, again, from Ottawa Army, again, very minimalist. They're not um, uh, very sort of generic, and uh, but they're, they're fine for what I want. I mean, that's just, it's just representation on the table. Um, and as I say, I need a lot of them, so I don't want to spend an awful lot of money buying all the limbers and all the horses and so forth. So well, I have got plans also to convert some cavalry figures, which I've identified as being suitable for conversion as um, the limber riders um, for the Prussians. So I'll probably do all, well, I have got all the limbers uh, on the way for all of the batteries, field batteries, for, uh, foot artillery and horse artillery. And I'll probably do a couple more um, limber teams um, for some, you know, a couple of limber teams with the um, artillery part. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, I, I'm not. I doubt I'll use ever use all the artillery um, being used all at once in in the battle. But it's nice to have a park of artillery that would be an obstruction and can sort of feed out um, extra batteries where where and when required. Um, so I mentioned. Um, so as I mentioned at the start, that at the back I've got some some hovels figures. Um, these actually they're both. The windmill there is a is a Dutch windmill, I believe, or Belgian, yeah, Dutch windmill, I think it's called. Um, and the and the 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 townhouse there with the carriageway uh, gate are both fifteen mil. But um, I think the, uh, you may recall the famous painting of Napoleon stood by a windmill. It's a sort of um, setup. If I get it here, I'll show you what I mean. Um, the windmill sort of. Is is like this, and you have Napoleon sort of on his horse. I think it is here, maybe on foot, and then coming up the road, coming up the road, so the windmill sort of up here. You've got a long line of um, a procession of French art, uh, French infantry. So yeah, the windmills um, hovels. It's a lovely model. Um, it's, you know, so they've given a little wooden dowel there. You can put it on, um, but it's yeah. I'm, I'm certain hovels have increased the size of their. Um, their their terrain because I, I always remembered it being quite small uh for 15 mil um obviously probably originally designed to incorporate the design of the original 15 mil figures that were incredibly uh small um so and obviously with scale creep they've probably decided to up the size of their models but they're very nice you know they're very competitive and uh cost effective um it's sort of metal sales and a resin um actual building so um, that will be painted up and look the part at some point on the battlefield I've got a set of big plans so 
Um, whether I pull them off um, this summer is the hope. I'll have some very big battles with all my you know, multi-core, multi-national armies. Um, whether I do it to that scale, um, I say I've got quite a bit, li- lots of little things to do, which um, obviously when you add them all up, it means you've got lots of, it's quite a big thing you've got to sort out. Um, but nothing unsurmountable. So I will certainly bring it to you, but hopefully it'll be this year and this summer, but we'll see. Um, yeah, so it's a sort of townhouse with a gateway, but I thought it also would serve um, as the some of the Southern German town paintings of the 1809 campaign. They've got sort of town gates and they're very much like that where they have a sort of house over the gateway. Um, I don't know if you've ever been to Bristol as well and seen or Southampton and they've got some old sort of medieval gates there and they sort of often have buildings built over the top of them and I, I just thought that would be that would um they usually have another gates alongside so two or three gates but um but I thought for a small German town and a walled town perhaps they might have thrown up a, a wall alongside it and have a sort of gateway like that. So um yeah so it's a good little feature. Um, and obviously it would just also serve as a standard townhouse in the town as well. Um, the walls, again, are 15 mil, um, and they, they are quite big when you compare them to my 15 mil figures. So uh, I usually like to buy things in 10 mil, but um, but certainly for fortified houses um, or farms, um, then those that size walls was perfectly uh, adequate and probably, you know, reasonably appropriate. Um yeah, so that's again hovels. So I've got more walling than what you can see, but um, I just sort of put a little section of it out there. Um, I'll get you that your townhouse so you can see the walls very standard, but so I don't I don't need to show you that too closely. Um, but the townhouse is um, yeah a nice model. It's uh, resin again from hovels. Um, yeah, it's nice, nice, nice model. Um, gateway. Yeah. So that's the sort of plan that may feature in my game. Um, I've been buying a lot of, or keeping an eye on a lot of terrain to try and set the scene and have sort of multi villages and stuff like that. And as you, um, and uh, yeah, I've painted up another cloth like this. Um, well, I've dyed it and I've got to, um, it's, a, it's a decorator's cloth, which I've dyed. And then I get some um, tester paints actually. And I just sort of dry brush them and, uh, uh, a couple of spray cans as well, and just trying to give a sort of slightly uh, different coloured terrain, and it actually comes out quite nice. Um, so yeah, that, so that's it really. I, so I won't go into too much detail. It's just a little waffle, but um, it's just really to show you that yes, indeed they are painted. I say they're not to a fantastic standard, but I'm happy with them. Um, they, they 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 are perfectly serviceable for what I need and what I want. Um, hold on, shall I bring it to you? I zoom out a bit first. You guys are going to be seasick. Um, so that yeah, they're perfectly serviceable for my my basic needs. Um, the the actual uh, musket um, musket carriers cordage or whatever you call it the um, straps that you carry your musket with holders you know <laughs> I don't know. they're actually a brown color for most of them but, but i did actually paint some white um, but i'm happy with that because the prussians did um, have a lot of equipment that was french um, certainly the reserve infantry regiments did and uh, british as well so um, if they have a few white straps then um, i'm sure they can be forgiven but most of them were a sort of brain brain color ready brain color uh, i'm led to understand um, and i have painted most of them in that way uh yeah so this is them um i say it's one of those ones where the closer you look at them the less probably the less um marvelous the painting and things will be but um they're uh, certainly okay from Ooh, let's try and zoom out for the uh look at it perfectly serviceable for um for mass effect wargaming um so there we are yeah um i don't know how long you want to <laughs> look at the army um i mentioned the Uhlans, yeah so um didn't come out too well in my show yesterday but i did uh, i've been sort of doing um putting green stuff on in replace to the polish helmets to give a sort of shaker effect um 
and when they're painted black they will look okay I'm, I'm dead certain of that um they'll look quite good in fact i'm sure some of them will probably look a bit big but um having looked at re friends of mine who are reenactors and some of their photos um they're certainly their shaker covers do look very big uh, on their heads uh, and i think that is quite accurate um a lot of the figures their shaker covers are quite um neatly you know in the size size and shape of the shako but um but certainly my understanding and it would make sense that they would be quite loose some of them uh to enable them to get put on and off quite easily um or to um yeah or just be misfitting um perhaps so yeah so anyway but that's certainly yeah my take if you, i say it's, some of my friends are in the british napoleonic regiments uh, reenactment and um they their shaker covers do look quite um Bill and Ben for pot men. Um, so uh, I, I'll, hopefully I can be forgiven with my uh, green stuff shaker covers. Um, so I mentioned that I'm getting lots of carts and stuff for the army as well. That's the plan, lots of carts and detritus of, uh, of uh, campaign um, army. Tents hopefully as well in the future, but that's all stuff to come. Um, oh, I also bought a few little scatter type terrain. I got a water trough and a kind of village cross again from holes and also got some farm animals so just a basic uh, kind of water trough they do lots of these little features which uh, say when you you know little vignettes and stuff you can put about your battle particularly if you're in big battles it makes it quite quite fun so hopefully i'll be able to feature these guys in, in some shape or form if i have time um that's that's often my challenge is big battles take time and uh it's not something I'm always gifted with, but um, hopefully with uh, the plans that are afoot, I will be able to squeeze some big battles in um, with my, my plans. Whether we get them finished, never matter, but certainly get them in and get them set up on, on the way. Okay, well, thanks for your, for your patience and say, hope you enjoy the colour supplement. Just as you know, I say I'm not doing a micro detail or, or uh, you know, micro uniform um, expression because it is a mass effect I'm looking for, but... I hope you agree that they do look okay in terms of um, fit for purpose, in terms of uh, fighting the French. Um, and uh, it's uh, Andy Mack from the uh, from the colour supplement of the uh, bench update. Oh, as yeah, as my uh, cuirassiers, I didn't give you a picture of them. Bench update. I'll probably put a few more white noses and stuff on the on the horses of the crash today. But from the bench update, yeah, wishing you a fond farewell. Keep safe, everybody, and um, look forward to uh, seeing some more of your content. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, do present some of your project work as well as just the sort of magazine chat and uh, sort of uh, you know, the uh, wargaming shows that that are quite popular at the moment because I do enjoy the um, sort of drilling down and seeing what people's projects are as well as just the uh, uh, what's news in the wargaming world type uh, chats and stuff so uh, do 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 keep the projects running and, and explaining to us because that, that's what i enjoy watching most so um i do there are some of the magazine content shows i enjoy as well but i do like the projects uh, and, and folks uh, talk throughs of, of the projects and, and plans that they have for them so annie mac all the best and uh, take care and uh, see you again soon bye